Hello and welcome back. I am so glad that you are here again. And hopefully you watched the first video that in this series. I'm calling this the love series. In the love series of videos. And um, if you didn't watch it, let's just do a little bit of a recap, okay? So in the first video, I talked about how if you were to leave this planet tomorrow, would you be satisfied with your life? Would you be satisfied with your inner life? Would you be satisfied with how you loved? How you felt that you were living in joy, living in peace, and living in that flow? I hope you thought about that. So we talked about that, and we also talked about this idea that there are vibrational matches in the world, and that we don't always get what we want, but we always get what we are. So your underlying vibration may be one of fear, and it may be one of love. And everything that I teach about is to point you to the truth of who you are, and the truth of who you are is love. You know, we talked a lot about The Course in Miracles last time, and one of my favorite quotes in The Course in Miracles is, only love is real. And so we talked about that. And really, if only love is real, love is the highest vibration. So when you have love in your vibration and you're consciously choosing to have love in your vibration, you will attract and experience the things that are equal to or match the vibration of love. It's that simple. Now, it's that simple, but we also talked about how we don't really choose love um, very much, and we don't use love as a very, very valuable tool in our life. Usually, we are listening to our crazy, insane mind, and our insane mind says we have to control, we have to um, make sure that we organize, and make sure that we, that we do things in the world to control. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if I said that last time, but that's the truth. But, as we decide and choose love, it removes all of the blocks. You know, I said last time that, that you know, people ask me all the time, I have a business that's called Attract Positive Results, and so... Ultimately, people are like, how can I be more positive? How can I be more positive? And I'm like, you don't have to be more positive. You just have to be less negative. If you remove those blocks, the blocks to love's presence, you automatically will be more positive because what's more positive than love? Nothing. It's the highest vibration there is. So on the journey that we are going through, if you are in anxiety or overwhelm or stress or fear or anger or judgment, we start to just slowly strip, strip that away. And if we strip that away little by little by little, this comes up. Love comes up. It is the natural place for all of us to be. We come from love, we are love, but we forgot. We forgot. I'm here to remind you. <laughs> that is my passion, that is my joy in my life, is to remind you that you are love. And so last time I also said that you walk through the last couple of days and see if you can use love more consciously in your life. If you can actually use love to shift your vibration. We went through a little bit of a, um, an exercise where I showed you how love can shift your vibration and that we're only looking for a little shift. We're not looking for a huge shift to go from I'm miserable to I love my life. That doesn't work. And usually if you see people that are like that, it is a little disconcerting because you can tell They're trying to convince themselves. And I'm all about not helping you convince yourself. I'm helping you to discover yourself and who you are is love. When you discover that, boy, it's just an awesome ride in your life. Say yes if you like that. Awesome. So I gave you a mantra and hopefully that you did it. And I'm saying all this recap to make sure that, you know, 
everyone that hasn't seen the first video is up to speed before we go into this content today. Um, but you can always watch the other video, which is right on this page, and you can see more in depth. But the mantra that I gave you was, I love myself, I love my life. It's so simple. You know, I believe, and I've been a teacher and um, a student of A Course in Miracles and many other um, spiritual teachings for more than 30 years, that's for sure, and I've been very intuitive for almost 50 years, because I am 50 years old. Um, so um, all of those, those things, you know, all of the things that I have gathered have always got, um, have, have really brought me back to this thing that I talked about, is that really only love is real. That's it. Only love is real. And so as I have grown, um, I have realized that more and more and more, my passion is to teach you that only love is real. Now, there's many layers to that, and those layers is what we are talking about in this video, um, in these videos, okay? All right, so, so I asked you to do the um, I love myself, I love my life, um, for the last couple of days and do it in the morning and see how you feel. See if you have a little bit of a shift. See if it, things change a little bit. Now, you know, thank you for your comments below. It really helps me a lot. And I've, I've had a couple of private messages and, and comments too, is that people are like, well, I didn't really feel a shift. We did an exercise where I had you bring up something negative, bring up something troubling in your life, and then we use love to see if it would shift. Now some people have said, well, it didn't really shift for me, so is something wrong with me? No, something's not wrong with you. That is what we called in the last video, the ego. The ego is the part of you that thinks without love, the part of you also that is always gonna keep you thinking that you're wrong, that something is wrong with you. And in The Course of Miracles, it would say, you know, the ego doesn't say you did something wrong, the ego said you are wrong that something is essentially wrong with you. You're a bad person. You are damaged beyond repair. Something's wrong with you. Now that voice is the voice we need to hear and we need to choose again and say, ah, there's my fear voice. I'm gonna choose again. I'm gonna choose again, okay? So all of those people that sent me private messages and even put down here that they didn't get much of a shift, well, there were people that had a lot of shift, which was great, or you even had a little bit. You are only looking for a little shift, just a little shift. You know, the ways of spirit are completely different and opposite to the ways of man. So man, and, the, and man always wants to he feel like, I made a big, huge jump, I made a big, huge leap. Spirit just is looking little whisper, that little bit, is your key. But here's your problem. You don't trust it. You don't trust that little bit. That trusting that little bit of shift is everything. It is everything. So trust that little bit. And I would say to you, the people that, that messaged me that said, I didn't feel a shift, I would say to you, just reevaluate. Get out of your head, get into your heart, get into your body, and go, oh, yeah, I felt a, uh. if you feel a little bit of a, uh, I would say if you feel a little relief, you're on the right track. You know, your ego will keep you from going, oh, that's not relief, and this is so stupid, and this is bull, you know what? Just tell that part of yourself, thank you for sharing, but we're going to listen to our vibration. We're going to listen to our feelings. You know, the divine, God, source, whatever you want to call it, is only speaking to you through vibration. The vibration you feel with others, the vibration you feel when you walk into a room, the vibration you feel about yourself. And we talked about that last time too, is that the Course in Miracles would say that ultimately, we think we have many problems. We think we have a problem with our finances, with our relationships, with our career, with our car, with the traffic, with Los Angeles, with New York, with Ohio. <laughs> we think we have a million problems. But it says you only have one problem. And that problem is your separation from 
the source or separation from love. As soon as you heal that separation, everything is great. Everything flows. You have a life that you feel like, wow, this is pretty good. I really like it. I really like my life. And I don't just like it, I actually sort of love it. And when you do that, oh, that's what I want for all of you. All right? So I hope that you did those exercises, and I hope that you saw a little bit of shift in it. And today I told you we're going to talk about something that in The Course of Miracles we, we say is the split mind. At the end of the video I talked about it, that we have this mind, I'll just say it's over here because fear is on this side, that this mind that thinks with the ego. And just to remind you again, the ego is the part that thinks without love. It's not the Freudian part. Freudian ego, with the id and the ego and the super ego. No. In, in The Course in Miracles, we're just talking about the part of you that thinks without love. Pretty easy. The part of you that thinks with fear, that gives you messages of doubt, that gives you messages of overwhelm, frustration, judgment. Okay? So that's one part of your mind. The other part of your mind is already healed. It's already perfect. You know, in the Course in Miracles, he says, he says only love is real and nothing unreal can affect what is real. Everything that's not of love is unreal, is unreal. So there's this split mind that we're working with all the time until we begin to heal that relationship, until we begin to, to meld those two things together, we start to say, well, actually, this love starts to just take over, little by little by little. And as it takes over, the result is this kind of inner peace, this kind of happiness, this kind of letting go of results, this kind of being a victor instead of a victim. All of that happens when you start to heal the split in your mind, okay? Now, to give you a little bit more of a, um, uh, I guess a, a visual of the split mind, I'm going to show you something. And this is something that, um, it's an analogy that Buddhists use a lot. Zen and Buddhists use a lot. And it has to do with, oh, it's in my pocket, I forgot. <laughs> okay, it has to do with a pendulum. Pendulum, okay? So I want you to look at the pendulum. Now, in The Course in Miracles, it teaches only love is real, which means this is a non-dualistic reality that we are going for, okay? So we're going, well, we don't even need to go for it because it's already there. Only love is real. So it's only love. That's it. There's no, there's no love, hate. There's no love, fear in spiritual reality. In this reality on some level, we perceive fear, love, fear, love, fear, love. So fear, love. Fear, love. Get it? Okay. So we think if there's fear, we got to get to love. Okay? Or it thinks if there's negative, there has to be positive. Okay? Now let's just take this down to brass tacks in our real life. In our real life, this is how it plays out. Are you ready? You're going to get it. You're going to get this. Fat, thin. Hmm. Ugly. Pretty, rich, poor, happy, sad, um, privileged, unprivileged. Do you see what I'm doing? This is duality. Happy, sad, ugly, um, ugly, pretty, smart, stupid. All these things that are going through our mind and that the world will always keep always, always, always keep um, solidifying and focusing on this duality, okay? So ultimately, this is what happens. See how this, how this equates to the split mind? You know, ugly ego, beautiful is spirit. Happy spirit, sad ego, okay? I'll, but I'll give a caveat to that, is that, you know, n nothing is black and white, but I want you to see very clearly that the pendulum is swinging. This is what happens in life. I'll show you. Ba, ba, yes, no, happy, sad, ugly, smart, 
Um, successful, unsuccessful. Oh, that's a big one. I'm successful. No, I'm not successful. Okay. Rich, poor. Worthy, unworthy. Desirable, undesirable. Okay. Dateable, undateable. Marriage material, unmarriage material. You see what I'm doing? It goes back and forth and back and forth. Now, this down here is the way of the world. What is it? It's the way of the world. Okay? So, what you and I want to do, because if you're on this video, you already have a calling to shift your life. You already have a calling that says, there's another way, there's another way. Please reach out, please reach out. <laughs> and you manifested me right into your life. We're a vibrational match, even if you didn't know it or not. Um, so, you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Now, your consciousness of where you see yourself how you see everything in the world is up to you. It's up to you. You know, in The Course in Miracles, one of the very first, one of the very first lessons in A Course in Miracles is everything I see has, I am giving everything, sorry, I'm giving everything the meaning it has for me. Everything I see, I'm giving the meaning it has for me. So I'm saying, that's good, that's bad. That will help me. That won't help me. This is bad. This is good. You see what I'm saying? So we're going back and forth in this direction that's like, oh my God, literally you are bipolar and you're crazy. Say yes if you ever feel like I'm crazy. I'm crazy because I go back and forth and it's like, I should do this. No, I should do that. No, no, he likes me. No, he doesn't like me. My kids love me. No, they hate me. I, whatever it is, say yes if that's you. It has been for me, and sometimes it is still, but I've done so much work that it's not so much anymore. Now, ultimately, your consciousness and where you're focusing, where you are focusing, is down here at the bottom. Okay? So you are at the effect of this. Yes, no, yes, no, wah, wah. Okay? You're at the effect of this. What you and I want to do is you and I want to see this differently, okay? We want to be able to, because if you look here, so get this shot here, is that we want to, as the, if we're down here at the bottom, we are at the effect of everything. Bam, bam. You're like a ship on the ocean, going back and forth and back and forth and up and down, crazy, crazy sane, happy, sad, rich, poor, wah, wah, wah. You're down there. now. If you notice, as I, as I um, swing this, as, your, as you go up this string, the string moves less and less as it goes up here. And right up here at the fulcrum, is it moving? No, it's not. The goal here is that when you have inner peace, when you know only love is real, you're up here. This is all happening. It's all happening, but you're looking at it from a still point. You're looking at it from a very healed point. When your consciousness and your point of view, your perception is up here, then, and only then, well, actually, as you go up, I'll take that back, as you go up the string and your consciousness rises, 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 you feel less of the effect of what's happening down here. Capiche? Does that make sense? Good. So, you know, I have done so much work over, you know, 30 years of the, being a Course in Miracles student and teacher, studying the Law of Attraction, being a certified Law of Attraction trainer, going through coaching programs, everything. Now, all of that work, you know, I worked, I said this on the last video, I worked with Louise Hay, I worked with Mar Marianne Williamson back in the 80s. Um, I, I worked with Dorian Virtue, I worked with Lisa Williams, I worked with all these different people and they're just awesome. And so my whole trajectory of my journey has taken me from, wow, let's just change the outside, let's change the inside, no, let's change the outside, let's change this, let's change this. Let's, what is going to bring me to my peace? And ultimately, it always comes back 
And it's really come back lately, because I talked about the challenge that I did last time, go back and watch the video, that ultimately, really, it all comes back to love. It just comes back to love. If we can use love in our life more specifically and more consciously, our life will change. And the truth of who you are is love. You get it? You might not feel it right now, but just look in my eyes. Believe me for a moment that when you get it, you can't go back. You know, in spiritual circles and spiritual training, um, it's called the top of the mountain experience. Once you get the experience, you just can't go back. You say, whoa, that's the way it was. And you know, I had that experience. I've had quite a few of those experiences through my life. One of the probably the most significant was a couple of, about a year and a half ago when I had my near-death experience. And when I died, and I realized that ultimately it was all love. You know, I, I went to the other side and I came back. And I'm not going to go into all of this. This is for a book. This is for something else. But at the same time, I want to tell you that all the work that I had done for many, many, many years, I was in a coma. I was intubated. I was out. My body was gone, ultimately. And I had a consciousness that left the body. And I realized, oh, it's not my body that something's wrong. It's, I mean, it's not me that something's wrong. It's my body. And I was like, oh, okay. And let go. It's all good. And as soon as I let go and I realized it doesn't matter if I have a body, it didn't matter. Who cares? The most beautiful, amazing feeling of love washed over me. I could feel everyone. I could hear everyone that was praying for me. I was, in, I was non-local. I was just energy at that point. And it confirmed all the work that I had been doing forever and ever and ever. Because I come from a place where when I was young, you know, I was really the outcast. I was really, you know, the one that everyone picked on. I was the geek, I was the nerd, I was the gay guy, I was the Brillo pad. I never, I mean, I had, literally, I had one friend. I had one friend. And, um, and it's painful to think about, but when, when I went through that, when I was a kid, and even, you know, late, a little later on in life, it was painful because it made me forget who I really was. Because before that I knew, and then the world kept telling me this other stuff. So I had severe self-loathing. I had severe self-hatred. You know, my hair was too curly. I had too many zits. I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't straight. And how did they know that? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Um, I wasn't all these things. And so I had all this, I got to change myself. I got to change myself. I got to change myself. So I tried all these different things and did all this stuff that ultimately just all failed. It all failed. And it wasn't until I said, you know what? I've got to get right with myself. And when I get right with myself, you know, um, I hope and I pray that I will get right with the world and everything will fall in place. And that's what happened for me. I, you know, it was when the Course in Miracles came into my life that I was like, oh, this is it. And I had been studying for many years before that. But it was when the Course in Miracles came that I said, oh, it's all about love. And I couldn't just love the world. I couldn't just love other people. I couldn't just forgive other people or forgive the world. I had to forgive myself. And when I forgive, for, started to forgive, forgive myself, I started to heal that relationship within myself. And when that started to happen, you know, when my life changed, I became joyful. I became peaceful. I became, um, I became a teacher. <laughs> I became a teacher after that. And then it became a passion for me to say, you know what? Anyone that's in pain, that might be you right now, I don't know. It's in pain about judging themselves. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not good enough. Something's wrong with me. You know, that's when I said, you know what? Uh, I want to be a beacon of light for other people to say, you know what, life is good. Life is great. Life is a grand adventure, and you can have it too. 
And so my whole um, you know, career has been based on this idea of helping other people to, to realize that same thing. And you'll, you will come to it in your own way. And you will come to it in a way that, that will serve you for at the right time for you. So just know, if you are one of the people that are watching this that has any kind of ideas about I'm not good enough or something's wrong with me or I need to change or any of those tapes that are going on in your mind, if you're one of those people, just know, you know what, you can't change. And just remember what I said before, you know, it's this idea of, of just removing the blocks to love's presence in your life. It's already there. You are love. Only love is real. And the more that you can kind of move up this ladder, the better it is. And the way you do that is that you use love consciously. You use love consciously. Okay? So I hope that you've gained some, I don't know, <laughs> something from, from what I've just spoke of. And I also um, want to leave you with this. Um, I want you to consider this. And I think that this is something that will help you in many ways. And you won't believe it at first. Um, some of you might. <laughs> but I want you to consider this. I want you to consider that everything that happens to you is the best possible thing that could happen to you. Hmm. Everything. Because you're assigning the meaning to everything that's happening to you. So I want you... And this isn't just... And I want you to, to get this... This isn't about pouring some like beautiful paint over some horrible situation. This is about saying that horrible situation is the best thing for me. Everything is the best thing for me and my growth. Everything that happens to me is the best thing that could happen to me for my growth, for m reminding myself that only love is real. So going to sign off now, but I want you to really consider that. I want you to think about it. I want you to meditate on it. That everything, good, bad, indifferent, is exactly the right thing for you. Okay? I'm going to be back in a couple of days, and um, um, we're going to talk a little bit more, have some more to share with you. Um, but please... Um, Write some comments below and answer some questions. I will answer some questions and I will make sure that um, I check the page and look at your comments. So as I always say, I pray that until we meet again, love will guide you. And remember, unthinkably good things can and do happen. I'll talk to you later.